if the camera picks this up. I gotta do it right here. Oh, there we go. I wrote TJ a note. NASCAR is lame. <laughs> NASCAR. <laughs> TJ thinks he's gonna start a NASCAR career. Yeah, he's giving up on open wheel. I don't blame him. Rebirth. I don't blame you. Rebirth. The rebirth. Hey, funny enough. So there, I've had I had a conversation this past weekend or Monday at this event. They had an Auto Club Auto Club Speedway. And a bunch of guys were talking that's been involved in motorsport on the agency and marketing side and management side. And we were talking about how NASCAR really needs to start to embrace this new generation of drivers. Yeah. and needs to really push that to help lower the demographic because the drivers are getting older, the viewers are getting older, and they're suffering. Mm. And they're trying to figure out who do they who do they support NASCAR in the promotional right. promotional aspect of, of the series and how do they, what do they do media wise, right? Their, their social media and their, and I know you guys talked about this last episode that I, that I was gone, but they, they are suffering so bad. The social media side. Yeah. Like reaching that younger demographic, whether or not it's Instagram or whatnot, but just in general, they're just not reaching that younger de- demographic. And I saw a story today where Kurt, I mean, Kyle Bush came out and said it is absurd and stupid that there's this big push to support these young drivers. And it's like, really, you don't, you don't get it. You're living your cush, you know, multi-million dollar life. <laughs> not thinking Kurt Bush? Kyle, Kyle, of course. And it's did. like, you were that guy at one point that they were pushing. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? Like you probably wouldn't have blown, like you probably wouldn't have blown up. Yes, you have the talent. You're, I mean, he's amazing. He's amazing. He's one of my favorite NASCAR drivers. But it's really good. Who says you would have ever been as big as you were as early as you were without the push from NASCAR? The whole rowdy bush, the whole, everything around you, right? And then to come back and say like the young, the younger generation doesn't deserve that. Why? Why I didn't did? read the full article? Okay. Just wonder, grab the headline. Typical millennial. Little clickbait. Little cl- clickbait, but. I found that quite interesting. Yeah, that is. Because, yeah, you got to look back and that's how, how did you get there? Right? Right. Like, it wasn't just talent. Yeah. Like, people were pushing you. People were pushing you because of your personality. That's one of the reasons why he's one of the biggest names in NASCAR is because of his personality, right? Yeah. So, why is he throwing shade at the younger drivers coming up? Like, yeah. In my opinion, that's one of the biggest downfalls for nascar right now is you have these 45 50 year olds that should be out the door right and they're not and you're just losing like your fans are getting older people aren't care they don't care anymore you got these guys that honestly are just collecting paychecks in my opinion right and yeah i mean that's come on man move on yeah i mean any car is the same it is but it's better it's getting a little bit better it's getting better and especially with the new body kit that whole thing should be, I mean, it looks just badass. Yeah, but you I know, think we've talked about there. I think it helped with Joseph winning this year, being yeah. a young guy. Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm Alex winning the Indy 500. And I think that younger generation making an impact younger in their career is only helping them. Right. You know, right. and then Alex and Connor on the amazing race. Um, I think it's only going to help. So it, it should be interesting. But yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm pumped. 2018 th- season about to start. Dude, I just to set the record straight. <laughs> I am I have contemplated NASCAR for now two days. <laughs> so but, but when I came in when I came in, the first word out of your mouth was NASCAR. you hear about my NASCAR <laughs> test that I'm trying to arrange. <laughs> so I mean uh have fun with that. I did a year of it. Did you? I told Is you. Is that why you're all salty? No, I'm not salty. You're just, salty. I'm not salty at all. Yo, I so decided salty. to stop doing it. It wasn't for and me. Then, and then that was the end? Like that was the last thing you did? In NASCAR? Or NASCAR no, no, type like, racing? <laughs> no, not the last thing I did. <laughs> but the, in NASCAR type racing, yes. I, d- I only did the modifieds mm. up in the Northeast. Oh. It just wasn't for me. Modified? The style of racing wasn't for me. You know? So. What, what's the style of racing? Uh, Let's get specific oh, here. Man, why are we getting. You throwing Bump and me? run? No. Well, I didn't like that a little bit. Yeah. We didn't have spotters in a lot of the races we did. Yo, by the so way. So that was like crazy. You didn't have spotters? Yeah, that was good. Jesus. It was crazy. You'd, you'd have people just turn down on you and 
you're like, I'm, I'm here. What are, <laughs> yeah. you, what are you doing? And then they Come try on. to fight you after the race. And you're like, what are you talking about? I was right next to you. You weren't all the way up beside me. Like, <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. But then you'd have the opposite where they'd like nudge you from behind and they'd yell at you for turning into you. Oh, yeah. Or turning down. And they're like, I was there. And I was like, you were not even at my, like, you were at my rear bumper with your front bumper. What are you talking about? Yeah. That's it shady. was fun. I just didn't, it wasn't my, my deal. It's, it's, Definitely anyone that says, oh, oval racing is easy, and hasn't done it. And, yeah. And are foolish. It it, it was very difficult because it's so different. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's like when we talk about with the PEC at Porsche Experience Center that the drifting part, right? Like there's a lot of skill to that. Yeah. You know, and our background, we aren't perfect at drifting especially in four-wheel drive cars, we're, we're learning, we're getting better at it. But that's where some of the guys that have a drifting background come in and are just like laser, oh. so good. And you, you're you always learning. And that's one of the things that it kind of humbles you because you're like, I can drift. I'm, I think I'm pretty good at it. Right. Not a pro, obviously. I could never do what those guys do. But seeing that and learning from i mean i know i could but yeah, you, you <laughs> like yeah, it, it would it time. would take a lot of time it would take some the fundamentals are there that's the thing though is <sighs> like i think i'd like i can't wait until we get like someone like die on the show but yeah. i remember when we were going over the drifting program like and he had to drift like gt4 and, and all these different cars yeah. mid-engine and it was really challenging like he he was just expressing that like right. openly, like because it's so different than what his yeah. what he's designed his style to. Yeah, it's just like when you go from open wheel to sports car or rear wheel drive to front wheel drive. Totally. You know? totally. I remember when I first drove a front wheel drive car, I was like, "What is this? It's alien. It's alien." And but it only makes you a better driver. It does. That's actually kind of the cool thing. If you do end up doing a little bit of the NASCAR stuff or right. stock car, we're even going to call it. Yeah, I don't know. NASCAR. Everything's NASCAR. Everything goes NASCAR. around a circle. It's like <laughs> okay. calling open wheel Formula One. Right, right. exactly. <laughs> but it's NASCAR. It's NASCAR. Uh, but it's only going to make you a more rounded driver. Yeah. Right? In the end. Right. It is. I say that to the karting drivers I work with. You know, it's like you going in racing on a harder tire, a slower cart, faster cart. Yeah. There's no harder, easier. It just makes you a better rounded driver. Yeah. A lot of people believe, oh, the softer tires are easier to drive on. It's not necessarily true because most people can't get the most out of that tire right. being as soft as it is. They just think, oh, well, you can just make less mistakes because you just chuck it in the corner and there's a grip there. It's forgiving. Well, maybe a little bit more forgiving, you're correct, but it's also harder to extract the speed For sure. out of than a slightly harder tire. Uh, uh, the harder tire has like that glass ceiling yeah. of you know, like comprehensive grip. Right. So you can only go so far. And usually for like the really good guys, that's mu that's like underwhelming right. for what you could do. Right. Whereas the soft tire, it's like you Everyone can never... Wants, listen to the Formula One drivers. Everyone wants more grip. Yeah. And, it, it, and, and you see it's not necessarily easier. Just look at qualifying on the on the ultra softs. Yeah. There are big gaps in the in the lap times. Extract. You gotta extract. extract. It's, exactly. it, it's really challenging. I mean, I think we've talked about it before, but... That was my experience on Michelin's. Right. It was like in Formula cars with Michelin's, they're just good. They're just really badass good tires, and you can just send it. That's true. So real quick, before we get too far ahead, make sure you guys subscribe. I know these podcasts are kind of long. We usually like to say it in the, uh, in the end, but make sure you subscribe. I know we're still in our beginnings, and we've had a few empty promises, but we're learning, and... Uh, we're only going to we, get we're only going to get better, it. you know. We're we're figuring this thing out. Yeah. So as long as you guys stay along for the ride and just help us grow, um, it should be it should be a good ride. Uh, gotta thank our partners, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll start out with projecto2.org, um, asthma awareness campaign. Check it out online. Um, Onit.com, O N N I T, their total human optimization. Um, and molecule, keep it clean. Yep. Clean those gloves. Minus 273. Minus I actually 273. had a conversation with them on Monday about doing some cross promotion. Really? Yep. Oh, so we'll oh. see. Should be cool. Look out Is for that. Some cafe marketing gloves. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. So what I want to talk about today more than anything is it's the beginning of the season, right? And this mainly pertains to you. Mm. Okay. 
because you're in this predicament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beginning of the season, you've been looking at finding funding for something specific. Yes. Not sure if you're going to get there. What do you do? Right? And this is for all the drivers out there that are in this pred- and that's a, it's a big percentage of drivers yeah. that are in this predicament. You have a goal, you're trying to do something, you're laser focused and you're going, okay, people are starting to test. I'm falling behind. Season's not too far away. Sports car racing, Rolex 24, Continental Tire, all that's starting now. Yeah. So if you're in the sports car world, you're already behind. Totally. But if you're in the open wheel and some of the NASCAR stuff, you have a little bit more time. But you're fall, you're starting to fall behind. Yeah. So what do you do? Do you say, I'm going to spend that money more strategically, right? Find an open seat and a good car that can win. We've talked about this before. Yeah. The only thing that matters is winning. No one cares about you taking a 10th place car to 5th. For sure. Right? Or do you transition? Do you say, you know what? I have a pretty lofty goal to be an open wheel driver or a NASCAR driver or a sports car driver. Maybe I can take my money somewhere else that will get me a full season in racing that maybe is a better fit for the money I have. Can I create a program that's better than doing three races? Yeah. Yeah. In maybe an average car because the best seats are already taken, right? Sports car racing is a little bit different, I think, because at least in the lower levels, you have more seats that open up further into the season in really good cars. Really? Yeah, you get lucky where someone, a gentleman driver, can't make the race because of business, family stuff, and a seat opens up two weeks before the race. You have money, you get in there, boom, and you get a good result. And at that point, too, you know it's a good car. Right. Because there's, a, there's like the results to yeah. prove it. I forgot the driver's name. Oh, I don't think he races anymore. But he actually, uh, I remember something happened with one of the top Continental teams in ST back in the day. And it was six hours of uh, VIR. Hmm. And last minute, went in, won the race. Last, and he oh. had a ride the next year because of it. And just made this splash, right? Like qualified the car. Double stinted, did did his deal, won the race, kind of a big deal. Had a full ride the next year, partially sponsored by um, like a contingency program with Honda. Huh. So I can't remember exactly the kid's name, but you know there are opportunities there. So you know you're you're in that predicament right now where what do you do? And I, it'd just be interesting to hear your what your mindset is. Disheveled disheveled but you got to stay focused right yeah, you, yeah. it's just no, like I'm, it's just like in or after a bad race weekend right you have to stay focused and you have to go you know what look maybe next year yeah let's stay focused on still advancing my career Something. so 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 where are you at and then we can kind of go from there yeah um i mean you mentioned it a little bit earlier it was like indie lights is Pla- the blackout ended, yeah. you know, and that was what I was going for. So still plenty of seats that are good open, you know, plenty. Um, but I don't know. I, I get Indy Lights. It's very, I mean, badass, really good competitive series. It's really, really, it's really hard to sell sponsorship in that. Just is. We already know that in Junior Open Wheel. But that's a lot of money compared to any other series in junior open wheel. It just is. Um, I I feel like F2 is more sellable, but so anyways, we're, we're like, okay, if we put that on hold for a second, where, where can we go with it? You know, like where does it make sense? And NASCAR came up potentially, you know, and the only thought with that, it, it kind of makes me mad about a little bit mad about the fact that, yeah, you go your whole way in open wheel, like the whole time you're going open wheel, and then that's all you've learned. And then stock cars is just completely different. And we were talking about like who is good that went from open wheel to stock cars. Like, do you know? I mean, you have a few guys. I mean, AJ Allmendinger has done a pretty good job, but yeah, uh, he's good. He's good, but like he hasn't been. When Robbie Champ Robbie car? Gordon didn't do too bad in yeah. his years. Tony St- okay. Tony Stewart. Tony is the Stewart, one. but Tony Stewart Tony's, is the one. Tony does have more of an oval background right. from 
dirt track midget sprint car days. That's good. I think personally, the hardest thing, and obviously my story is a little bit different because the modifieds are vastly different than stock cars. Right. It's closer to an open wheel car. And I think that's why I had some pretty good success from the beginning. But from what I've been told from uh, one of my good friends that raced, they went even didn't even go really from open wheel, from sports cars started to do some NASCAR. Was and he went straight pretty much from trucks to spring cup and did a few spring cup races. Is that the weight and how much weight in the tire and yeah. managing that at that speed is incredibly difficult. And those guys are so good that, and like we talked about, extracting that out of the car. He goes, When you're in qualifying and you make a setup change and you're going out and you have one lap and you're at Charlotte and you're turning in flat at 200. 10 miles an hour and you're hoping the car sticks mm. the car's been loose all day but you know you need to put the lap in he's like that's about the most puckering thing i've ever done wow and you know he hasn't raced indy 500 or anything like that but he's raced everything there is damn and he's one of the winningest drivers in sports car racing in america so he, he's got some skills it takes an effort it takes an effort and it's not the same at all you know, like I, I feel like the skills you learn, I always say this, like when I go from driving an open wheel car to like when we sim in GT yeah. cars, when I did the 25, same shit. It was like, I don't know, you, the way, the, like the natural tendency I have to drive a car when I get in a GT car, I'm out for lunch. Yeah. And it's not that I don't know how to drive. It's just there's an adaptation I have to make there every is. time. Every time, like when I'm like push lap, over driving it. Yeah. Every time. And so like deal, add now more weight to a car that already doesn't want to turn, doesn't want to slow down. It just wants to go in a straight line really, really fast. Yeah. That's what it wants to do. It's a taxi cab that's like, no, we're going to go 200 straight and then, oh shit, we have to turn <laughs> every time right. over and, and over, over and over with again. tiny little tires. Yeah. It's not even like, I mean, aero. What? They don't even have data. There's no well, data. there is. No. No, there is. No data. They're just not allowed to race with it. You can't They practice. test with data. No. They test. Do they? Yes. Well, they shouldn't. Well, they test with data. But yes, you're right. At a certain point during the weekend, they can't have any data systems on the car. But there is data. They test everywhere. They do all their tire testing. That's with data. Okay. So they have that. But Imagine, though, that you like, literally, you rely on your spotter to know, like, am I turning in too early? Am I on throttle long enough? You should try the High Line. You, it looks like it's looking really yeah. good for Rowdy. And like, yeah, and you Rowdy's can't even, making that High Line work. Shit, Move up there. I would <laughs> try it out for a lap. Only boom him. into the wall. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> you see that though? It's tough, man. I know. I definitely. It's tough for sure. That's why. But let me ask you this: a lot of open wheel guys go from open wheel, whatever, Champ Car, Lights, Atlantic, over to NASCAR. The top one, top NASCAR, yeah, big NASCAR, without any of the preliminary learning steps. Yep. I don't know. It, the only one they really do is Xfinity, but like, it's yeah. But very... I've been told, and obviously I don't know this from experience, but in trucks and Xfinity, it is a lot to do with what car you're in. Yeah, Sprint Cup. I've been told a little bit more. The driver can make a big difference there, hmm. but in trucks, what Sprint Cup? Um, sorry, yeah. Monster Energy <laughs> Cup, whatever it is these days. Um, but in in nationwide and in trucks, it's a lot to do with what car you're in. There's For a reason sure. why a, Kurt, a Kyle Busch car wins trucks a lot, yeah. no matter what driver's in it. Obviously, they're all good drivers. Nothing is that, but you know, when there's a lot of mo- there's a bigger disparity in money being spent between the medium and low teams and the top teams. Yeah, you see those bigger differences, right? right. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. but. Back to the the main topic, I think the biggest thing, and this is what we've talked with you a little bit, is you kind of have to go with where the momentum is. Yeah. Okay, if your momentum in the in the genre or area that you're going is stalling or slowing, and you don't think that you're going to see it ramp back up, it maybe it's time for a change. Yeah, you know, and we've talked about this before. James Davison, Daniel Morad, they saw that dip. They even took a year off or two got themselves back together, and now both of them are killing it in sports car racing. Big careers right now. Big young guns coming up. So I think 
not necessarily to you, but to the younger drivers and other drivers kind of looking at you kind of have to go where that momentum's going. Yeah. You know, if that momentum and that you, you don't really see the path or the path is starting to get cloudy, you need to take a big look and go, is it time for me to switch it up a little bit here? And the, it's hard to know. Yeah. It, it's hard to even know, like, it, when, at least, like, when you're driving a race car, you, like, actually know when you've stalled. <laughs> it tells you by the engine no longer running. <laughs> <laughs> but like in this instance, it's like, yeah, you missed the deadline to get into Indy Lights for 2018 to start the season. Does that mean that you have no chance of an open wheel career from here on out? No. Tough to say. No, you're tr- you're right. You you're know, hundred percent. Right, and it's it's hard to call like, okay, maybe we do have momentum. It's just a timing thing. You know, like that's that's really what I'm hung up on now. Like where I'm I'm still trying to figure out if I stick this thing out long enough. I think that some of the sponsorship deals can definitely fall our way. It's just based on meetings. Yeah. Meetings take freaking time. We talked about this yeah. like episode two, yeah. how everything takes time. Damn, it does. Like so little has happened <laughs> since, <laughs> but like not bad. The, these deals have grown, but like, you know, and it's like we're closer. I think we're really close now, but it's still not like definitive. We're in. You're still, you're still months away. Yeah, months away. So, I think it, part of it is like you mentioned momentum, I think, stalling I, I, momentum. I think you are right because, you know, my wife's in the entertainment industry and I have a few friends that are in, in the entertainment industry and you have people that their breaks came well after, you know, just grinding it out. Yeah. And it's, there are some similarities where opportunities can come at the rarest times totally and you just never know when they're going to come you could call someone tomorrow a new sponsor tomorrow and it could just be that company that wants to give you half a million dollars right you don't know you really don't know it's a it's in the end i was talking to a one of my young drivers that his parents were telling them you know you need to start practicing finding money not that you need the money but you need to start getting in the habit of doing it so that when you do really need it, right, you have the experience or you have the money because you've raised a little bit. So he came to me with a little bit of advice, and I said a lot of it is a numbers game. Yeah. If you knock on 20 doors or you knock on 100 doors, the likelihood of you getting a callback or a meeting or even money is more likely the more doors you knock on. Yeah. Now, does that mean that you don't have to be strategic and you just cold call everyone no you need to be strategic Mm -hmm. but it is still a numbers game the more people you contact whether or not it's for sponsorship or whether or not it's just creating a personal relationship with more people you stop we talked to gustavo about this on episode one right about a lot of his opportunities have come from personal relationships over time yeah so i told him i go start going to cars and coffee you're 12, 13 years old, just start meeting people. Yeah. Wear a shirt that says your, you know, your racing program on it. Cafe. Just, no. just introduce yourself. And then maybe next year, after you've created a relationship with someone that you're seeing at every cars and coffee that has the baddest collection of cars. Yeah. You invite him out to a race or two, pay for his race, you know, his pass to come to see your go-kart race. Right. And then the next year you hit them up and say, Hey man, you know, I'm expanding my racing. You know, it's getting a little bit more expensive. I'd be interested if you'd like to help in any way. Right. Boom. Who knows? Who because knows? a lot of the deals at this point, not at your point at the younger for these younger kids are not actually, these people are not looking for an ROI. Yeah. It's more of a, I want to help you out because I like you and I believe in you. Yeah, totally. If I get a little bit of ROI, that's cool. I get to write it off for my company. Cool. Right. You know, but it's those personal relationships. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, for sure, you should start early, start networking. LinkedIn, LinkedIn's the move. You like LinkedIn? I love LinkedIn. I'm big. Do you have a premium it. account? Of course. Of course. Was yeah. it $9 a month or something? It's well worth well any worth. money you would spend. I remember this is well before LinkedIn days. My dad, I got so many contacts, not that I was successful, but I got so many contacts and actually a lot of phone calls, meetings, or at least phone conversations with CFOs and CMOs because 
he had there's this database and your dad probably knows about it mm. too uh there What's was a few called? companies oh it's like blue something maybe or there's a two or three that were really big that were these databases where people had their personal contact information if you're yeah salespeople i mean data.com cfos you know cmos ceos were kind of hard to find on there but you could find these people email addresses, especially if the company that you're like my dad, some of his companies paid for the accounts. Yeah. So they had like the big database, like the premium account that you could just get everyone's Boom. dude, just which is hard. It, it, and I, what I've learned part of it, you have to send out the emails because you never know who will respond. Yep. One thing you got to think about. We're going to go into email marketing, <laughs> but like it, not email marketing, but like, I guess uh lead generation type thing mm-hmm. right but like you have to send the emails because i have totally long shotted some emails where i guessed on the account and i got a return i was like what this is crazy like i literally guessed it's true which you can do like john.smith at company name.com Re- Boom. return to sender do j dot smith. smith j dot smith j, j smith, smith. Yep. smith dot j yep one at the end it yeah. goes on. Yeah, yeah. And you can look up. You can literally just Google like con- like common email addresses for companies. Yeah. And like it'll give you a list of 10 like foolproof ones. Oh, yeah. Each company kind of has a structure that they yeah. do where it's like first initial dot last name. Yeah. At, and sometimes, you know, maybe the email for higher level executives is a, a different, slightly different web address. I've yeah. seen sometimes than they're the big web address that you go to. Um. Yeah. But here's the thing. Then let's say you have a deck. Okay. Right? If you have a brand deck. Now, some, if they're a bigger company, they'll boot out anything that has an attachment at all. So this is important to remember because you won't be a notified. I'm glad you're saying this. Keep going. Yeah. So you won't be notified that it gets booted out of their system. It just goes to their spam and they'll never see it. Yep. So one of the moves is to um, just don't attach it and say, hey, I'll send over our brand deck like once we get, you know, further in our communication, which is a great move. People are just just you know, try to bite the just get a little bite from them. That's all you're looking for. A little bit. Yep. If you get a response, that's that's big. Now, the other thing too, some of them have like a 3 megabyte uh attachment filter. So if it's anything over 3 megabytes of your brand deck, right. it's out. You'll never they'll never see it. They'll never see the email. It's gone. So you have to create a brand deck that's amazing. It's flawless. It tells your points. got graphics a little bit, kind of. It's fast. It's elegant. It's artsy. Whatever you want it to be, under three megabytes. Like, don't even mess around. How much emphasis do you put on the subject? Um, I play around with it. I have so many different variations. So I've learned over the years how important these cold emails are with the subject line. That is, especially in today's world where everyone is first filtering yep. the emails through their phones. They don't, you know, a lot of these people. Yeah, they're not going desktop. They're not seeing it on their desktop. Or they, they will respond on their desktop maybe and really read it through the desktop. But they're filtering yeah. on their phone, right? At lunch, maybe first in the office, just perusing. Yeah. Oh, email comes in, check on their phone. And... You don't have an opportunity on that on a lot of phones. All you see is the subject line and yeah. maybe a few words of the actual content, you know, like the five. content of the email. So some of the stuff I've seen and high-level executives on YouTube and other talk about giving advice of just whether or not to job job application or or mark trying, you know, trying to connect or partner with companies and yeah. social media or anything. The subject line is so important that you can really grab their attention. I know people, they, there was one CEO that said he sometimes likes when the whole email is written in the, in the subject line. I wouldn't do that for a I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I thought that was kind of weird, but he, he, was, he seems like an eccentric kind of yeah. guy. But he, he did mention that. But I wow. think that's, that's very important. It's, what would you recommend? What would you like a foolproof way? There's no foolproof way because... Well, like I, I think guess, everyone's different, right? For sure, for sure. But there's like, going to be guys that that see it and see sponsorship, partnership, racing. Go, don't care. 
like that's that. my that's my that's slide good, delete yeah, the f- out of here f- trash can that's definitely not a pin and i just don't that's think out. you can the, there is no foolproof that's why whenever i see these videos on youtube that are like you know the five best ways yeah yeah, yeah. you know the five best cover letters everyone looks for Listicles. different yeah everyone looks for different things it's not the same there's gonna be someone that loves motorsports and is gonna see a spot see da, 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 sponsorship right, and be right. like i can't believe someone is seeing thinking our company is worthy of this right you never know thank you yeah appreciate it <laughs> no so no, i know and you just don't know that's and why i feel I like you like you're about to say you can play around with it yeah you gotta you gotta switch it up a little bit you can't just stay one and go i think you gotta have like five to ten variations that you feel and then see which ones get responses and the ones that and sometimes that data could be incorrect because it's just they were going to respond anyways. Yeah. It didn't matter what subject. Yeah. So you kind of got to like, you got to dial it in, but still be open to the idea of changing it. I think the most important part is starting off asking questions and yeah. being more about that. Yeah, I'm interested in what then, you Then, hey, I'm a race car driver. I need money. Yeah. Sponsor me. Dude, and I... And I, I know there's polite ways to say that, but really smart people read through the bullshit right and go cool i get the bullshit that you just wrote me yeah thanks but no thanks but i think if you come in at an angle of really wanting to understand their business and try to see if there are opportunities that can lead to a conversation they're more likely to talk to you yeah right hey have you ever thought about sponsorship in motorsports? Not saying that exactly, because yeah, that's like yeah. a very, everyone kind of says that. But that's a 30 you, mail in. Right. If you, if you go about that route a little bit more creative, there's going to be opportunities for there. Cause, uh, and especially if you maybe even go about it the route where you're just like, hey, as a top level executive, not saying you're going to be the company, yeah. what would you be looking for in, an opportunity like this i'm just trying to learn yeah they might be more willing to have a sit down with you and educate you and you almost have a roundabout way to sell them on it right or yeah. at least them connect you with someone else that they may think is it, interested in. it's it. definitely tough to go in the direction of like telling me how we can you know teach me about how this can work whatever right. because I, i've gone down the route of like literally it's just somebody that wants to be a professor they just want to te- and like tell you why this, you know, like, oh, you need to add this and like this needs work. And, and it's like, yo, okay, like you can pick apart anything. Right. Anything can be picked apart. Yeah. So it's like there's, a, a, I've just experienced there's a fine line between direction and like literally education. And so, you know, it's like figure out, it's got to be a top level guy if you're getting education. For sure. You know, and I mean, I've had one company where I literally had a sales associate like we had a meeting and basically we talked about how, okay, what will the company bite on? Like he was totally into the racing thing and loved it. And he's like, all right, to make this like sellable for them to say, yes, you would have to sell them on this, this, and that. Right. And it's like, you're the move. Yeah. <laughs> this is the guy I need to know. Like, that's awesome. He's helping you try to sell it to the higher ups. Yeah. From the inside. Yeah. You know, it's great. And, and so going back to the original thing though is, we talk about like, you know, you got to think about, okay, is it stalling? Timing. What Do you wait it out? Do you keep just like hammering on the nail? Hopefully it'll start wedging in there. Are or you, do you take different path? Are you okay with taking a year off and building, using this as a building year and really going, you know, hey, are you sold on this? We don't need to do it this year. Right. I'm going 2019. It's tough. It's definitely tough to not do any racing this year, right. especially with Project O2. It ha- I have to be racing something to. It just. It, no, it, I get it. It's hard to do any work. Yeah. You know, it's hard to. It's hard to you know be a race car driver with asthma. NASCAR. NASCAR. You know, here's the thing too. People have to decide: Do they want to be commercially sponsored, or do they want to be gentleman driver supported? These are two different routes. When we talk about GT cars, prototypes, et cetera. Look, this is this is my opinion. This is my like what? my advice. Yeah, yeah. Give it. Yo, as long as you're getting paid. Sure. I mean, that's the real like I had this argument with someone. They said, well, is he is that really a professional driver if he's just getting paid by 
Absolutely. Some gentleman. Of, absolutely. Absolutely. He's just a, he's, yeah. he's a professional. What are you talking about? What are you about? talking about? But there's people that legitimately believe that if you're not racing for a factor if, or paid by the racing team itself, that oh. you're not a professional. Like That's, that's a douchey thought. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. But like. I hope. And I've been out of the sports car world for a few years now. So I'm hoping like maybe it's a little different now. But there was a little stigma going around for a little bit of like, oh, well, he just races for some gentleman driver that pays for his racing and he just stole some guy's client out from underneath him, blah, 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 blah. It's like, dude, business of business, as they say. Yeah, I can get it if they, if they, like literally there was a driver supported by that gentleman driver and then they swooped in, took it. And see, I don't fight, like, maybe I'm an asshole, but. <laughs> If he's better. Dude, if the guy decided that he was going to change, there was obviously something else wrong that yeah. he saw. There was something better out there. Right. That's my personal opinion. I don't think it's right to go after other people. This is a business, right. right? But business is business. I mean, the thing is, too, that guy that swept in there could have been putting the hard sell on him, Who talking some shit. Okay, that's different. People do that. That's different. If he's talking shit, starting lie, you know, saying yeah. things that aren't factual, and I get that. But if he just went in there and con- contacted your your gentleman driver right. and was like, "Hey, are you happy with what's going on?" Da, da da da, and that guy, and you ask him maybe how much are you paying him, and that guy decides he wants to answer. That's yeah. on him. That's not on you. I mean, hopefully someone goes about it in that way. I hopefully I would be I would surprised <laughs> if that was the only. Yo, Joe Schmo is such a hack. Yeah, I know. Why are you paying him ten grand a race? I'll, he hasn't I'll won do it for anything. five. No, he hasn't won anything. Five grand a race. So bad in Mazda. And I'll pay for my own travel. Yeah, seriously. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. People will do that. And my point with that, when you have to decide on like where you're going, again, where where do you I look at it as gentleman drive like supported by a gentleman driver. That's that's paycheck. It's paycheck. It's paycheck, but there's that um, underlying. I don't know. You, it's not certain. I don't think it's not certain. Whereas when you develop a commercial package and you are legitimately able to raise sponsorship, although difficult, you have the opportunity to race anything forever, and that's a lot different. That's a bit. No, no, no. Bold statement. I don't think so. No, because. Generally, I, you're not selling sponsorship on an ROI basis. I agree. It's a, it's you're selling a story, something like that. You're not even selling. You're you are uh, connecting a brand with a story. Yeah. And if it makes sense, it makes sense. It doesn't matter what you're racing. It's true. And you can go race anything forever. You know, it, pff, Baja. Sure. Right. Dakar. Probably not. <laughs> no. I mean, I don't know. What does it take to do rally? What does it take to go and like? I think it's hard, right? It's hard. Rally, that's got to be hard. Yeah, too many people have died. Really? Yeah, there's been a lot. But mm. do you, I, I how do you get into do it? Rally. How do you get into it? Rally? Yeah, like what do you... Like if you're an American, how do you get into rally? Totally. I imagine you go to a dirt fish school. Okay, you go to dirt you fish. You go and do, um, you know, the SC, I think it's SCCA that does the rallies, yeah. right? Uh, I think it's obviously very difficult because we don't have a big, big program in the U.S. But I think it's like anything else, man. You find money, you sell it, and you go and you get a what are they call what's the lower level, like the WRC B class or whatever they call it. Oh, really? That they don't televise much. There's lower levels to WRC that doesn't get much publicity on television or in the news. Yeah. I think you do that and you go spend the money and you hopefully you get good results and you get picked up by a factory team. Yeah. I think it's a long shot. Do you know? There's like, not much. <laughs> there's not many factory teams anymore in WRC. Right. It's such it's not a long like shot. It used to be. I don't, I don't think you do rally as, a, I mean, at least as an American. And if you're not Finnish or yeah. Swedish or something like that, no one cares about you because. By the way, check out the, have you, do you watch Grand Tour? The Grand Tour? No, I don't watch it. Um, Remember, I don't care about cars. Damn, this is different. I know. So I'm just kidding. I <laughs> I actually do think it's cool. I just it's cool. Don't watch it's cool. it. It's like a, it's like this. It's like uh no, I'm not gonna compare us to them. <laughs> no, I know it. I know no, yeah. Yeah. They, they are here. We are <laughs> right. You can't lower, see it. We're yeah, below the actual. camera angle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like they might be there. Right. <laughs> but we can't see them. Yeah. 
At least we didn't knock anyone out. Yeah, but the, yeah. <laughs> but do you think that's hyped too? I think it's hyped. I think it's hyped. It's because they probably saw the writing on the wall with the BBC. Yeah. And they're like, Amazon is the move. Oh, how do for we, sure. How do we like close this thing out? It would have been even cooler it. if they were Netflix. Yeah, I know. I know. So, yeah. but anyways, they, their recent episode, Gas, Gas, Gas. They were like... That's what it was called? Or yeah. do you think it's... Oh, no, no, no. It, was, it also was gas. But okay. <laughs> throwing gas. Jeremy Clarkson did this amazing story on a rally. I'm not... I haven't really heard much about okay. rally. I just haven't had the time to delve into the sport. But he gave this awesome story about when Audi went into... They were all in rally. And Audi... It was illegal to have an all-wheel drive car in the WRC. Okay. They, at one conference, like at the very end for the FIA meeting, all the manufacturers are there at the table. And like the Audi representative at the end is like, hey, this uh, this thing about the four-wheel drive thing, we should get rid of that, right? We shouldn't have that. And they're like, ah, eh, what's he on about? It's crazy guy. Sure, get it out of here. Didn't even think twice. You know, <laughs> the, they were thinking about the lorries and the whatever, right. you know? And three years later, Audi enters a all-wheel drive car in wrc smokes them it's a, yeah smoke show <laughs> not it's even, killing not even close and it's way better you have lancia and th their budgets are insane the engineers the german engineer the crazy is so good and the best drivers then you have lancia who comes in they're on a shoestring budget they're italian lancia lancia there you go okay and they're rear wheel drive no all-wheel drive this is two-wheel drive. Little tiny mid-engine thing. Like, seriously no budget at all. And apparently, like, the team principal was just a guru about rally. And As they, you'd expect, some Italian they, guy. They won some races? Dude, they won the championship. Ooh. Yeah, like, they beat this conglomerate Audi in an all-wheel drive car. That's they cool. beat them in the championship. And, like, they did it by, like, really cool little stories. Like, they would put like in the monaco it was like kind of icy and they yep. would literally go to the grocery stores take all of the sand they knew the corners that were icy salted the roads like whoa yeah because they knew maybe you can uh show a picture if we get it all, to work you can show a picture right here the lancha of the lancha i'll show Audi a little clip and show both yeah a little clip the it was such good editing and everything it, i was very it was eloquent that's cool so that's cool, man. What we were on about though, <laughs> before before that whole I don't know. No, it was like uh dang it. <laughs> what was it? Oh no, this is so before, typical for us. This is so typical. You Wait, know what? But it's a don't good close it out No, yet. it's a good time to close it out. <laughs> it <laughs> is because it's for, we're getting forty five minutes. It's a great time to close it out. It is a great time to close it out. So but <laughs> I I have to remember this. No, well post no, it we in the description. We won't cover No, it. just post it in the description or something. Probably good. <laughs> so no but in the end i think it's your career path is your own career path yeah. take advice if you need to take a year off take rally a year off wait i'm interrupting you <laughs> oh yeah how does one get into rally and i was gonna ask you do you know the <laughs> sorry yeah do you know the ladder of ken block yeah i know the ladder of ken block it's called millions of dollars okay, okay. <laughs> because the last episode we just Dropped haterade on him. It was just a <laughs> rag set. Like he's got talent kind of. of some kind. We literally the Jim Connor talent. It's the Jim Connor, like, yeah, because we hyped up. Okay, dude, like his, talent versus hype. And his shit's cool. It's for, dope, right? It's like palatable. I love, I love watching his videos. Oh, it's great, so cool. And this, this is what I'm talking about. But as a world rally driver, I know, <laughs> dude. It, even in. Global rally come cross. On. Yeah. How on. much money his program has and he gets smoked. I know. Okay. He's Enough not coming on. He's not we're, coming we're trying, on the show. I would love for Ken Block to come on the show you know and tell what? us about it. We should get our I wonder if he'll be honest, but the guests that we have yeah. lined up. We mm. keep talking about this, but he has an inside scoop on for this. Sure. We're bringing it up for, for sure. sure. For sure. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure, dude. Okay. And th what I was gonna say though is like NASCAR. Yeah. We're talking about younger audience engaging. Dude, we we're watching like at Porsche. I remember watching like the onboard visor cam mm -hmm. from inside the stock car at New at Loudon, yeah. New Hampshire. So boring, yeah. so bad. Bah. Yeah, bah. and it's like that's the difference between Jim Connor 
and NASCAR onboards. Like, dude, there's ah, the, uh, there's got to be something. You got to take, you got to take uh, GRC and NASCAR and combine them. You have to make something that's isn't combined. that called demolition derby? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, it's figure, not. That's the figure eight race. V eight supercars, man. Oh, okay. But like fast and like maybe more aerodynamic, whatever. There's got to be something like that. Create it, race it. Now you have a racing career. Yeah. You think? You no. just create your own race series? <laughs> Is that the move? That's not the move. That's not the move. Okay. We always end on creating our I own know, race right? series. All right, Cafe guys. A race series. Thanks for uh, watching episode nine. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Be sure to follow, subscribe. Subscribe to all like, the socials. Like our Facebook page, like our Instagram page. Share it with your friends. We sh- Let us know if you want apparel with the new logo. Yo, every Comment. Tuesday. Every Tuesday, live stream on Facebook. Every Tuesday, tune in around roughly around 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific time. It's a big window. But hey, uh, what are we going to do here? So <laughs> 4 to 6 p.m. Tuesday. We're living up to it. Live stream we're not every Tuesday. So um, yeah, we're digging this. We're, we're every freaking Tuesday. We're in. We're getting better. Number nine, number 10, now on the docket. Ready to go. In the books. Boom. Boom. Boom.